Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 2 episode number 5 and 6 reactions. Okay, previous two episodes, episode number 3, uh, we were like Korra was still under the whole like you know thing of our ah, Tarlok is the not Tarlok, sorry. Um, Unalok. Unalok is the best and everyone else is my enemy. They're not enemy, but like, you know, like it doesn't want what I want, this and that. You know, typical, like, you know, rebellious face. And <clears throat> like, it kind of escalated in a little bad direction because um, there was like this whole rebellion thing happening. Varric, a new character, he kind of like, you know, says that, okay, let's go and... Uh, you know like rebel against Unalak and they kind of like you know Unalak used that as like uh, you know like what can I say like as as an opportunity to make Korra think that oh Varric and the dad was actually um, you know working against him and you know there was this whole uh, staged situation I'm, I'm pretty sure that was staged staged situation of um, uh, Unalak being kidnapped you know like on the process of being kidnapped by uh, the uh, uh, by uh, by uh, Varric, Varric, Varric and his people and um, like thankfully like Korra was able to defeat them and saw that the dad was not involved but it didn't work out well by the end of it at least uh, Korra went back and apologized to his dad and to her dad and mom uh, but Tarla, uh, not Tarlok, Unalok, Unalok got them captured. And then the next episode, episode 4, we see like um, the whole trial happening. Uh, it was a joke of a trial uh, because the main guy, Hota or something, I think that was his name or something. Um, he was basically bought, obviously, like, you know, bribed by uh, Unalok. And he's like, oh, I sentence all of you to death. But then Unalok is like, nah, they're family. Like, you know, just... A lifetime imprisonment or something like that he said all right sure fine like he kind of made himself look as the better person here you know while the whole thing was staged by him he bribed hota all that stuff so Korra was not happy with this Korra went back got hota and it was like you know used like you know told him to like you know just say everything what's what's happening and he's like oh like unalak bribed me and even unalak was the one who uh, you know like uh, manipulated the situation in the past where he framed your dad being the culprit of destroying the you know like the spirit forest while I was the one who actually made preparations for it all that stuff uh, so yeah we know now Unlock is a bad person um, even worse than I actually thought I didn't think like he would who he was the one who framed his dad in the past as well turns out that he was uh, so <clears throat> Yeah, and by the end of it, like, you know, the dad gets, uh, like, you know, like, transported somewhere, they fight, you know, Unalak and Korra, and then they kind of, like, you know, take Varric as well into their whole, uh, like, you know, like, rescue operation, go and uh, rescue the dad, and now uh, the dad is like, okay, you go and uh, ask for help from the United, uh, United Front, I think that was what it was called, um, and, you know, we will be here, so Korra's like, fine. And that was that. And there was this all the whole thing with Desna and Eska as well, like which was hilarious. Bolin, Desna, and Eska. <laughs> and now, like, Eska is just coming towards them. I don't know what she's going to do. So let's see what, what happens in these two episodes. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. This is episode number um, five of The Legend of Korra, book two. I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. All right, here's the countdown three, two, one, go. Okay. <clears throat> brother versus brother. <laughs> Yep. Yes. Oh, this guy. Yeah, I forgot. He's the new uh, peacekeepers. Okay. Oh. Oh wait. Okay. This is uh, all right. 
<laughs> Alright, don't tease her. At least in this situation. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> mm, maybe no okay Oh my god, and what's bowling? <laughs> oh boy. This bubble just run. Oh no, okay, don't stop. Oh great. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, fine. Just yeah, keep doing that. Like you know, like every, like reinforcements are going to come. Oh no, yo. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, look at Eska. Oh my God, yo. <laughs> this girl. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Oh they okay, kind of just went to sleep. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Is this a... <laughs> I don't... Okay. Is this... Uh, yeah... Whose statue is this? is this? Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, don't don't get angry. Keep your calm, Cora. This is a peaceful <coughs> <coughs> What the? Who are these? Oh! What the? Oh no, it's like bombers and oh boy, what is happening? Oh yeah, he's a firebender. Oh my god, here we go, the chaos will now start. Now everyone's going to blame this on the Southern Water Tribe, obviously. Like, but I'm pretty sure Unalak did this. What? What was? Ah! Uh, my God! Yeah, they're going to say that this is a s oh boy. What? Wait, what? Obviously, it's Unalak who's responsible, not the northern. Oh my god. Cora, try to understand. 
Wait, what is happening here? Damn. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, running away from a crazy girl, you know? Nothing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. Um Yes. <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. But yes. <laughs> uh. Hmm? <laughs> it works every time. What? As a speaker or like a... Oh. Hopefully. Okay. Oh my god, what? <laughs> okay. Um yeah, I was pretty sure he was gonna say something like that. But that's the water tribes problem. Okay, yeah. Alright, Cora. Oh my god. Okay. Diplomatic. Uh Mm, I still don't know like, if, if, if we can trust this guy, this guy, the president, Raiko. Okay, yep. <laughs> All right, calm down. Okay. What the hell? Ah. Okay, what is happening here? Okay. <laughs> Supplies. Um. <laughs> okay. What the? You're crazy. This guy is completely nuts. <laughs> what is he doing? Uh, 
And it's shit. And Zuli's writing it down. Huh? Hmm. Okay. Ah, ah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow, that worked pretty well. That's how he brings out his ideas. Because, uh, politics, you know. Oh, what is this? <laughs> what? Do the thing. Oh my god, what? Yo! <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like a risk dangerous idea, dangerous idea. Hmm. What? Oh, the... Oh, it's like a criminal? Or... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Puffy doesn't care. <laughs> oh, come on. Just uh <laughs> Okay, Tenzin. He, he's not a lemur, what? Okay, no, what, what the hell, Tenzin? What? Come on, Tenzin, what is... Oh my god. Everything's not like that, Tenzin. Oh, great. Me okay. Will this work? Oh, no. What the? Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god, these people. Oh! Wait, I... I doubt that. They're just having... Great, this is the situation of the police force here. <laughs> the 
What? Oh god. You know what? Every person in... Like in all the other people here that we are seeing... Are just... Hmm. I don't trust this guy, this Raiko. Oh no. Oh no, he, he's going to tell them about the whole plan that Varric... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh no. No, nah, it's just... Okay, great. Hmm... Yeah. Oh. Grandfa- Wait. What? What? <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, this guy- this girl. Very <laughs> uh. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Um, Bolin. Bolin's just giving hints to everyone, you know? What is happening? Um, wait, what? Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> okay, well, I guess, um, yeah, this is another way, but I'm not sure if this is... Wow! Natural born leader! <laughs> oh no, he'll be like, no! Okay, there you go. Okay, there you go, nice. Alright, this is alright, you know, I, I was thinking th they were going to go too much into the whole training thing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! Yo, don't do that, you're going to get arrested. You know what? This is what happens if you rush so much into this whole... Like, in season 1. Okay, I'll talk about this later on. Oh, great. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is just amazing. <laughs> oh, great.
Okay, what's happening? Oh, the... Oh, no! Okay, great. Another... Okay. Ah. Um... Okay, well... We have enough problems than this. Damn, look at this. It's like... Come on, will she go into the avatar state? What? What is that? What? What is that? Oh no! Whoa! What? <laughs> okay, yeah, this is a big problem. Oh! All right, here we go. Okay. Nice, there you go. No, 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 oh my God, no. Ah. Uh. And they're just... Okay, well, that was, um... Something. <sighs> Alright, this episode, um... Yeah, nothing much happened here. Uh, first of all... Uh, okay, something did happen, but... Okay, so here, in the beginning, um, we, we come to the Republic City. Uh, we meet uh, Beifong. Uh, what was I always forget her first name? Lin was it? Anyways, um, yeah, we meet we meet her and um, you know like uh, they're like okay, we need to go to President Raiko, ask him for support, and you know then we're going to uh, go and fight against the Northern Water Tribe. Now, obviously. It won't be this easy because they, you know there's like this whole political situation this is a whole political situation now i don't actually know like i i'm not quite sure if like who knows it wouldn't surprise me if uh raiku was actually working with unalak you know uh, behind everyone's back it wouldn't surprise me uh but it also like you know as i said like you know, this is like a polit political situation you just cannot be like you know what yeah these like, uh, you know, the Northern Water, Water Tribe are um, posing a problem. Let's just go attack them. This is not that easy. This is this is nothing, like, you know, so easy. This is like, you, you have the uh, weight of the whole uh, country uh, on your shoulders. You just cannot just bark off orders to go and attack another nation. It's like, you know, it, that's not how it goes. So either, you know, like, because of the political, like, you know, problems and everything, Raikyu is not helping uh, Korra, either that, or he's working uh, behind everyone's back with Unalak. Either these two. I'm still not sure which one it is because, again, like you know, like I, I kind of trusted Unalak before. You know, when, uh, in, when he was introduced, I was, I thought like, oh, maybe this guy is not as bad as we think. Maybe he is someone who is just a little bit rigid, you know, for uh, stuff and a little bit too serious. Uh, and that's why he's making these mistakes. I thought he was a person like that, but turns out no, he's, he's just. It's just like a uh, like, you know, lying scumbag, like the way he uh, manipulated everyone to uh, become the chief and everything and banish uh, Korra's dad. So, <clears throat> yeah, like I, I, I am I was proven wrong there. So I'm 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 not able to completely trust Raiku. It can go either way. Either he is working behind everyone's back or this is just because of normal political reasons. Who knows? We'll, I'm pretty sure we're going to get to know that in a few epi uh, episodes because, um, yeah. Okay, so um, here we. Uh, so yeah, now <clears throat> peaceful protest. It was going uh, against you know like uh, all the southern water tribe members. They were peacefully protesting. Now, thing happens here. 
the place like you know blows up like there were a few people who a few firebenders who blew the uh, you know buildings and everything and uh, i'm pretty sure no one got hurt but still it was like a commotion that happened um and now obviously everyone's like you know the other team is going to say that no the other team did it like for example the southern water tribe members will say that the northern water tribe members did that and the northern water tribe members will say that the southern water tribe members did that obviously this was done to uh you know to make this more con like you know to, to see like you know to, to to cause more confusion now um I don't know who did this. Like at the beginning, I thought maybe this was Unalak. You know, Unalak took, told his people to do this thing. Now that the episode has ended, I'm not quite sure. You know, maybe maybe there's something else that is going on here. Um, as I said, I am kind of suspicious on Raiko here uh but at the same time i'm not so sure you know like it wouldn't surprise me if in the next episode we get a revelation that oh raiku was behind the whole attack and he did this because he has some other agenda or something now as i said i i'm probably suspecting normal people you know but since i was proven wrong with the whole unalak situation <coughs> now I'm, I'm mistrusting everyone like, you know, like everyone seems suspicious here. Like this book, like in book number two, it feels like everyone other than the main cast, except a few people, for example, except Varric, except um, obviously the dad, you know, like Tone Rock, uh, except these few people, uh, every, every new character that we are meeting, it, it looks like they're like some, some way or the other suspicious. Like that's basically what's happening in this uh, book. So yeah, I don't trust Raiko. I, I really don't because he, he seems kind of he seems suspicious uh, even though he's like the president of this place I don't know but yeah we'll have to wait for that I'm sure we're going to get to know either Unalak told his men to do this like you know this whole com commotion that happened blowing up of the buildings either Unalak uh, set his men to do that or it was um, under Raiku's orders either of that let's let's wait for it so okay <clears throat> now that was that then there's this whole thing with Varric <laughs> you know I, I kind of think like this is kind of weird if you think about it like there's like a whole war going on and everything and um uh like Asami is like oh my <laughs> you know my my company is going on down under <laughs> help me out <laughs> like like there's like a war going on and she's like oh help my company out like it's kind of weird this whole situation in a way uh, but you know a person has got to do something you know because that's that's asami's only way of like you know like that, that's like his uh, her own like you know company and obviously if it goes down under it'll be a problem so yeah I'm, i guess like she obviously she she needs to take care of herself as well so she's looking out for herself and that's good you know like like yeah like let her do what she wants but okay so here <clears throat> Bolin comes in front of the, the the arena and everyone is like oh Bolin is here a local hero <laughs> and Bolin Bolin's pretty good at you know like giving speeches and everything as he says like he 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 got hold of that that trick you know like, like just like he said he's like you know what whenever i kind of mess up at things i always bring up either the republic city or my fans and everyone just loves it you know like and just like how he, he was kind of getting depressed you know like by the middle of it everyone's also kind of getting depressed and then he says like oh this is for my fans and everyone's like yeah <laughs> Bolin, Bolin has got it, you know, Bolin, Bolin can be an influencer. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, imagine just bowling like, you know, fil filming YouTube videos and everything, just having a huge fan base. <laughs> but anyways, um, Varric is like, all right, we can use that, you know, we can use our talent over there. And <laughs> I'm still not so sure about Varric. <laughs> But but he's hilarious. You know that's that's one thing I'm pretty sure everyone will agree on. Like he is he's pretty pretty goofy. You can say. 
and so is Bolin. So this this whole like, you know combination is pretty hilarious. You know, Varric and Bolin <laughs> doing their own shenanigans. Uh, okay, and then we go and meet the president, uh, Mr. Raikou, and okay, the first thing that he does is like oh, snap a picture, uh, just just smile, you know. And obviously for the media, you need, you need that. Like you need to make it seem as if like yeah, everything's fine. Um, but yeah, okay. And then he says like, all right, let, tell me what you want. And they give their problem. They say like, oh, the North is doing this and that. This is a problem. Raiku is like, we cannot get involved in this. I'm sorry, but my troops cannot go. Now, here's the thing. Um, as I said, um, this is like a political situation. Now, Korra kind of goes completely crazy here. She's like, oh, you're going to, like, you, you'll be the responsible for my parents, uh, my family's, you know, like, destruction. This and that, he, she kind of starts saying. Like, <clears throat> I, like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm quite conflicted about this situation. Because, number one, I can understand Raiku's point over here. Like, his position, he's the president of a, of a like, you know, of a city. And if if he, he he's just gonna bark out orders and say like oh like go and attack them it's impossible you need to keep an eye on the politics and everything like you know like and like see the entirety of the situation you like the, a whole country a whole city like depends on you you just cannot be like that reckless leader so obviously that's like his standpoint here and he cannot give orders like this just like that so I can see that you know. That's why I'm saying like I am not sure about this whole situation. But at the same time, I feel like he is a bit too rigid or hard about this. Because, you know, he could have just spared at least something. Like helped Korra out in some way. Like not directly, but in some way, you know. Like he, I'm sure he could have helped her out. But he decided not to. So that's what's actually bothering me. Like, it seems as if, like, he has more, some more, what can I say, like, um, hidden some, like, you know, some agenda or something here. Now, I might be completely wrong, you know. This might be just him being a president. He cannot just, you know, give out orders like that. It m might be just that. But I feel like he could have helped Korra out in some way, but he did not. And that's what's actually bothering me. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, now here's where the problem starts. Korra starts acting like her previous self again. I'm talking about the first few episodes. She's like, oh, like, like I feel like Korra's too hot-headed, you know? She, she, Tenzin was right, you know? Like, she she has not <laughs> mastered airbender, uh, airbending at all. Like, you know, I, I feel like, you know what? I feel like Korra needs to go to Guru Patik. Like, you know, like he, he was the best, like, you know, one of the best people for this in Avatar The Last Airbender. If she just goes and stays with Guru Patik for a while, she, he's probably, like, you know, not alive anymore. It's kind of sad if you think about it like that. But <clears throat> now I'm just saying, you know, like, if, if she is some way uh, how, able to meet someone like Guru Patik and he, like, you know, stays with that person for a few days, um yeah she'll she'll understand each and everything about this whole like you know about the balance Korra is extremely unbalanced for an avatar you know and since an avatar is like the you know the symbol of balance <laughs> Korra you're not doing a good job but I'm pretty sure she's going to like you know little by little understand and as they say like you know you 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 learn stuff from your mistakes and she's making mistakes currently and i'm pretty sure uh, afterwards she's going to learn from her mistakes and become the go good avatar you know like uh, do her duty and everything anyways um so yeah she kind of like goes crazy here goes to marco and she's like oh we're going to do this on our own marco's like no i cannot do that i'm 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 a police officer god for god's sake i cannot like you know do something like this and but I was like, oh, you never, like, what did she say? Like, oh, you never, um, something, something or the other, like, you can, like, kind of start squabbling and everything. <laughs> and she's like, fine, I'll do it myself. Goes to Varric, uh, meets Asami there. And, <laughs> like, this is one good thing that, okay, now, he, this post, like, you know, this part, my God, Varric is... <laughs> Varric is something, you know, he's like, he, he eats a chili first and then he's like, okay, I need to get my blood, like, you know, rushing into my head, just turns upside down and he's like, oh, the ideas are coming. 
and he just starts like you know talking about all the ideas that he have and it's good it's a good idea you know he kind of, kind of came up with a proper plan you can say it was a little bit reckless but it was still a plan at least he says that he we need to go to general iro um uh, get the troops to help us not the president like keep this uh quiet uh for the, uh, like you know uh, at least from the president and just like you know do this and for asami asami is like you know like a company he's like all right like you you need to sell stuff to people why not sell it to cora not cora but you know the southern water tribe and 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 the army that so uh, one bird two birds with one stone and i'm like yeah like i i think like this was a decent enough plan but it's a bit reckless you know this whole thing of not telling the president and using the troops was a little bit reckless but i think like yeah this is a proper plan and uh, okay and then the next scene we see like you know like marco trying to find the person the criminal who like you know kind of blew up the whole place and he found him you know in, in one of the books and everything and okay then we shift to tenzin now here's the thing it's kind of weird to see like you know tenzin just you know, in a vacation and these people like having like a war and and i i guess like that's basically what happened like you know like cora told him to go away and uh like that's what he did you know he went away and <laughs> but still like you know and now here here i kind of thought that the way tenzin was always like you know so uh meticulous like you know he was saying like oh you need to train uh you know pokey like this and that I was thinking this was going to go in a wrong direction. Like, you know, the, when um, uh, Milo was saying like, oh, Pokey, you need to sit down. You, you cannot get up on the bed, this and that. I thought it was kind of going in a very weird and wrong direction. The way he was like, you know, treating the pet. But it turns out by the end of it, it was fine, I guess. But still, like, you know, I kind of feel sad for the whole situation. Like when Milo was saying like, oh, like it's tough being uh, like, you know, leader and everything. Uh, tough being an alpha lemur <laughs> and the you know pokey was kind of sad it's kind of made me a little bit sad but yeah anyways okay the next part um oh okay here this part oh my god marco comes in um beifong and uh the president were talking and uh raiko was like oh you know you you cannot find anyone i'll i'll i'll, I'll try to like you know replace you if you are unable to provide proper results and everything now <clears throat> marco here uh, those two people those two the colleagues or whatever they mess with him tells him to go inside when the, there's the president inside and he gets kind of scolded off and just takes the picture and keeps it and marco's like did you find something about the remote control he's like ah yeah like I'm, we have seen it it's nothing much uh the northern water tribes did it that's it and that's how they conclude the case like great like this is um this is the police force but obviously like you know like i i know like this this happens not only in in avatar like in the real world as well where there's like corrupt people just just doing nothing just sitting behind their desks and yeah that's basically what's happening here and obviously like you know like uh, Beifong has a lot of things to do like she cannot keep an eye out on for all of these people and like that's why you know the whole like this system the justice system the 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 police system it gets compromised because of these few people who don't do their work well enough and these corrupt officials so yeah and then there's this one person like you know who just does their job properly for example marco here and he he gets like all the like you know the short end of the stick like sad sad thing you know but nothing you can do about it this is reality oh uh, but yeah um, that was that okay and then oh god raiko comes out raiko's like oh you're dating the avatar aren't you um you need to tell me if she's doing something wrong uh because you're a police officer first you went through the oath now Here's the thing, I don't blame Marco for telling him, like obviously, like you know, like as 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 Raiko said, that he took an oath. He should be um true to his duty. And Marco just did his duty. You know, he just did his duty and like 
what can I say? But at the same time, I, I kind of feel a little bit uh, bad for Cora as well because Cora trusted him, you know? Like, it's, it's, just, it's a really weird situation, you know? Like, like Marco's here, like, you know, he's a police officer. She, he cannot lie in front of the president. And he needs to tell the truth. But at the same time, it feels like, you know, he's betraying Cora in some way. Like, that's basically what happened. It's, that's what I said. Like, it's, a, it's a very weird situation here. Like, I don't blame either of them. Neither Cora for getting mad at this situation, neither Marco for telling the truth. Like, this is basically one of those situations which is unavoidable and, you know, like, this, like you cannot do anything about it. That's, that's why, you know, like, I'm like, ah, like, what else can you do even? Like, I think Marco did the right thing by telling the truth. But still, I, I kind of feel bad for Cora at the same time because Cora trusted Marco completely. She, she thought that, yeah, even if some situation like this might come in, he wouldn't say anything, but yeah, nothing you can do about it. Anyways, she tries to go to General Iroh and talk about it. Iroh was very, like, you know, um, enthusiastic about doing this. But then in comes Raiko and he's like, ah, yeah, you, you're not going to do anything. You'll be court-martialed. And Iroh cannot do anything. Cora realized who said it because, you know, like, uh, Raiku said that, yeah, it was... Uh, no, 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 not here. Sorry. Cora did not realize here. He, she goes back to Bolin and Bolin is doing his shooting <laughs> with Ginger and like, you know, like that whole th scene. And Cora's like, take care of Naga. I'm going to the Fire Nation. Oh, okay. This part. Just a second. Let me check this part. Um, I need to uh, pay attention to this part. Ira says, I'm sorry. My hands are officially tired. Cora's like, I understand. Thanks anyway. Okay, here we go. But you should talk to the Fire Lord. My mother and grandfather have always been good friends. My mother been good friends to the Avatar. My mother and grandfather. Okay, I'm as far as I could understand. So, Iro's grandfather is Zuko. Is that what is happening? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me because Iroh seems pretty, like, you know, like a teenager or even like, you know, uh, older. So that would mean his mom, mom and dad are probably in their 35s or 40s, which would mean that his grandfather is probably at the 60s or the 65s, which would kind of coincide with Aang's age if he was alive still at this moment uh 70s like you know something ang would be like that 70 or more than that uh and obviously zuko and ang were almost the same age i don't know what their ages were but they were pretty sim similar to age so that would mean that his grandfather is zuko i think so and he says like the fire lord so yeah his grandfather is zuko and he says like that my mom was a good friend with the avatar so that would mean zuko's daughter yeah, so Zuko's daughter was good friends with Aang? Yeah, okay, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me because, you know, like Zuko's uh, daughter, so obviously Aang would, uh, you know, be a lot more affectionate towards her. So, yeah, that's probably why like, you know, they were good friends. That's why he's saying, like, yeah, my mom and my grandfather were good friends with the Avatar. So, probably something like that. We'll, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to find it, like, you know, like, see Zuko. I, and he's alive, and he's alive, that means. Zuko is still alive. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened. And uh, Korra goes back. Bolin says, and here Bolin again, <laughs> giving out all the secrets. He's like, oh, like, Marco would have, like, you know. And Korra's like, yeah, Marco. Marco definitely did it and just went running outside. And then we go back to the Tenzin scene. Now, as I said here, like... I guess everything's fine. Milo kind of was is training them, and at the same time, there's also having fun with them. That's okay then. Like you know, like I was kind of thinking like this is going to go in a bad direction where he's just like you know training these uh, Lemur Lemurs without even having any proper fun or emotional bonding. You know, I thought it was going to go in that direction, but I can see like Milo has proper emotional bonding with with P uh, Pokey and the other Lemurs Lemurs. Lemurs, sorry. <laughs> so I guess it, it will work out properly. So yeah. <laughs> and this kind of shows that Milo has a very like you know good leadership skill. 
That's just says like I made a monster. <laughs> All right. Cora comes in, sh shoves down the door, and is like, "Oh, you said everything." And Marco's like, "Yeah, obviously I'm a police officer. What's what am I supposed to do?" And like st stuff happened, and he's like, "Oh, we're breaking up." And she's like, "Fine," goes away. Now, as I said, I don't blame either Cora or Marco for this situation. Marco was in a tough situation here. He needed to tell the truth. He's a police officer first and foremost. He cannot. Like, you know, just drawn a blind eye to his duty. And at the same time, I also feel bad for Cora because Cora trusted Marco to not tell anything, but Marco did. So neither of them is to blame. Just blame the situation, you know. <laughs> but one thing I, I have to say, which is like, you know, kind of weird, is like they kind of broke up again. And I'm like, oh my God, for God's sake, like this, uh, this is like, this is going to continue, isn't it? Like this whole breaking up and like, you know, patching up and breaking up and patching up again. Like, this is weird, you know, like I, like I at least was accustomed to seeing Aang and Korra, like, you know, like just like, they were just, you know, they just got together and that was just it, you know, like such, such a wholesome way they were. And here is like the full chaos. Like this, like, you know, this Korra, Marco, this whole thing, like, like they, 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 what can I say? Like they they got involved in a relationship a bit too quickly, in my opinion. Like you know, they, they like the way this happened. Like it was so quick that I feel like this this is going to happen because they don't have that thing. Like I doubt they even know each other properly within this few amount of like you know months that they got to know each other. For uh, Ang and Cora, uh, not Cora. For Ang and Katara, uh, uh, for Ang and Katara, um, <clears throat> they they were involved like you know they, they were like friends and everything for so long and that's why you know when when they like kind of became came together it was like a strong bond which couldn't be broken but here Cora and marco is definitely not like that they just and this is probably going to happen continue for quite a while this patching up and breaking up this whole thing and i'm not like you know like looking forward to that but we'll see Okay, Nkora takes a motor, uh, like speedboat and like, tries to get out of uh, here, tries to go to uh, Fire Nation and in comes Eska and Desna, my god. Eska's mad because Cora took his, her husband. <laughs> and, <laughs> god. and then the spirit comes out and this fight with the spirit happens, Cora tries to subdue the spirits, unfortunately it does not work properly. And like, and Cora gets defeated and you can say something like that <clears throat> and yeah i don't know what's i don't know what's going to happen after this she got taken underneath the avatar state is not properly working so somehow she needs to get out of this situation i don't know how she's able to do she will be able to do that because since the avatar state was also unable to stop the spirit what should could she even do in this situation let's see this episode will answer our questions so yeah this is episode number four five six no ah yeah six six <laughs> episode number six of the legend of Korra, book two so yeah let's get started i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start okay here's the countdown three two one go Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the sting, okay. What is this? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What the? Oh, great. Where are the people who are defending this ship? There's no one on board. Uh. 
Ja. Oh yeah, this okay. And what are they going to do? The the dad told E. Um, your father is here. What the? Okay. Well, obviously, what are you supposed to do? Um, no, I don't think it's his dad, but... Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> Bowen looks pretty good, you know, in this costume. <laughs> the Southern Water Tribe members are like, yay! Um, okay, Gigi Rotan. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, my God, they painted. Okay, I did not notice that. <laughs> okay. Um Star being born. Wow. Okay. <laughs> mm. He is correct in a way, you know. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, wait. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> oh. Anti energy net. Next week, okay. Wait, this is like a <laughs> like a weekly thing. Um <laughs> oh. oh um yes oh wait what okay <laughs> Oh boy. Oh no. Oh, there she. Okay. Uh. 
Oke. Okay. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Same people involved. Fifth favorite ship. Oh, wait, why fifth then? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. What? No, he's a firebender, isn't it? God damn, this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you guys. Come on, hey! Ah, oh, boy. Wait, uh, what the hell? They chair. How? Um, yeah, Varric is here. <laughs> okay. All right, we are... Yeah, we need some people. What? Um. She's out of town. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Bolin's busy with his um. Yeah. There you go. Wow, okay. Patrick. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh my god. Bolin. Instrument. Wow. Oh, calling him out. Oh, ah, uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> instrument. Ah. Uh. No, it's not. Who is this?
Who the hell? Oh no, it's, it's that guy. You know, in season one. Yeah, yeah, the triple threats or whatever. Oh no, this is going in a bad direction, I feel like. Okay, but I feel like this is going to go in a bad direction because he's a police officer, you know, if Beifang gets to know this, my god, he's going to be fired completely and Okay, okay, zip, 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 yes, zip. Oh, great. Mm. Ah. Um. Okay. No, I don't. I'm not liking the way this is going. Oh, great. This guy's going to tell everyone. Wow. Okay, no one's believing him. Okay, never mind. Oh my god, what? <laughs> oh my god, yo! Yeah! Oh no, this is... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Perfect! Yes! You're a genius! <laughs> well, obviously. I don't think so. Well, obviously. <laughs> um, Bolin. Oh. Yeah. Twi oh my god. <laughs> um What is happening? Okay, great. This is what's happening. <laughs> Look at its toes. Yeah, it's a setup. Yeah. You you're fighting as a bender. Like obviously what are you going to do? Oh my god. Great. Ah. Oh. 
Oh my god. Okay, so this guy's obviously some water vendor, okay. Oh no. Oh no. Ah! Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> yes! Oh my god, dude. Oh, we will! Okay, fire bending, come on. Oh no! Okay, um... Um... Oh! <coughs> yeah. What? Oh no, maybe something's... Oh no! Oh my god! You know what? I'm 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 tired of this whole thing. This whole what is even happening here? Like what the hell? Okay, yeah. Great, Marco great. <laughs> no doping. Oh, that's what happened. <laughs> Everything's a mess. Yes. <laughs> Wait, Julie's there. Isn't that Julie? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You know what would be funny if Eska and Desna somehow is able to turn up over here. <laughs> Just <laughs> oh wait, so maybe maybe he's he's coming up with something. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god, I trusted him. What the hell?
Okay, well, there you go. What happened to Korra? Okay, there she, I think there she is, yeah. Um, what is this place? Who the? Oh! Yo, calm down! Who is this? Fire Nation? Um, wait, what? Are you for real? Okay. Ah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well, there you go. Um, now Cora has amnesia. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, I feel like, I feel like, uh, book two is all over the place, you know, like, uh, there's so many things happening. I really am like, it's, it's like all over the place. Like, it's weird. If you think about it like that, like, like so fast paced, so... Like, I don't know. I don't want to know what to say, but I guess. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that happened here is in this, uh, in this episode is that uh, a, a ship got attacked with the, the thing, the explosives and everything. Weird people started, uh, started attacking them and everyone's like, oh, it's a northern water tribe. And okay, so another thing we see here is Eska and Desna was standing in front of the portal. Unola came out of the portal and they said like, wait, you went inside the spirit world? And Unolak is like, oh, don't, like, you know, no need to think about that. Tell me where the avatar is. And he kind of brushes past that. So I'm, I'm, I think like that's, that'll be probably like a big plot point or something in the future. But yeah. Okay, so Okay, so yeah, that's that. Now here in Republic City, um Bolin is obviously like a star of like a, a show, like a mover or whatever they called it. I'm not sure what that means, but um, probably some kind of like you know weekly serialized uh like you know TV show or something. And yeah, they're kind of showing how um Bolin is the uh, great uh, Nakdak. <laughs> the great hero and he's fighting Unalak to like you know defeat him and get his friends and everything everyone uh, out, out from the harm's way and <laughs> everyone's loving it like you know all the sudden water tribe members because you know like and that's like Varric's plan Varric is like oh we actually like get into people's head like this you know, like, oh my god, the things that he says are so, so true, you, if you think about it like that, you know, like, um, where is it, um, this part, like, <laughs> he's like, Bole, look up there, what do you see, uh, is this a trick question, um, he's like, no, I'll tell you what I see, no, not this one, okay, yeah, you're a star, people love stars, Stars tell them what to think and how to act. Oh my god, this line. Oof. <laughs> okay, well, he's not wrong, you know? Like, <laughs> like nowadays, like, you know, like people just, like, you know, this whole stardom, this whole celebrity thing, people just, like, you know, it's, it's just, what can I say? Like, as he said, like, you know, it's like they, their world are revolving around them. You know, that's basically what's happening and whatever, like, you know, like they say is like a truth for the people, for their audience. And uh, even if like, you know, like uh, something is wrong, some of some someone says something wrong, their fans will be like, oh, this is right. And <laughs> Varric is using that 
you know, using that as an opportunity. And this guy, oh my God, like Varric, I have to say, he is, he's something. And you know what, if you think about it, like how, like, you know, how weird this book is, like book two, you know, it's so, as I said, it's so all over the place. It's so weird. There's like some situations which make you face bomb completely, like, you know, and uh, like, you know, this, obviously this, I am like, you know, if compared to season one, I definitely on, am not liking book two at all that much. Uh, it's a good like you know it's, 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 I, I'm liking the story because obviously like you, all these characters are here and the characters that we got attached to in season one is here so I'm like yeah fine it's it's like you know like I, I can continue watching this but the story in, in the story department I have to say obviously season one was way better than season two and like why am I saying this like out of even of uh, uh, even if like you know this uh, season has these type of shortcomings I have to say, I feel like Varric is probably the best part of this season. Like, the things that he says, and now that we know that he's like, kind of a, like a mastermind behind this whole thing, if you think about it, it kind of shows that, yeah, this guy, this guy is pretty, not pretty, but extremely intelligent and like knows what he's doing. And, my god, like, yeah, like, at the antagonistic standpoint, you can say, um, Varric is probably a good villain. Now, I'm not sure if he's a villain here or if he's just like a minor villain or something, but he seems like a villain by the end of the, like, by the ending revelation. So as a minor villain, I can say that Varric is probably really great, you know, and I'm looking forward to what, what's going to happen after this. <laughs> Especially in like, you know, what Varric is going to do. But yeah, he says like the stars tell you them what to think, how to act. Bolin, have you ever tried to force a monkey marmot to ride a bicycle? Not that I can recall. Of course you haven't. You can't force monkey marmots to do anything. They got to want to do it themselves. Ah, Phew. again, another truth. So basically he's like, yeah, you know what? We won't tell these people that the northerners are wrong. The southerners are correct here. We're going to make them realize that themselves. Unless and until that happens, you know, nothing will start moving. Like, you know, we don't tell them, we don't lead them, but we make them realize through these things, through these, like, you know, movers, as he said, like, you know, um, these little shows, TV shows that we are doing, we manipulate the mass into thinking and realizing that themselves. Great. <laughs> this guy. Oh god. And obviously Bolin is unable to understand what he's like, you know, he's Bolin's pretty like, you know, down to earth, you can say. And I, I guess he's getting manipulated here in a way. Like sad. Like <laughs> like he he runs away from his like you know crazy girlfriend and now this happens, like very gets his claws on Bolin and he's like, Oh, I'm going to manipulate you and make you do what I want and uh god ah but yeah like and then like we see the little the, the show that's happening and bolin is trying to <laughs> bolin is trying to um, you know like flatter um ginger but it's not working ginger is like oh like you know i i like naktak but not bolin <laughs> bolin is like wait i am naktak <laughs> uh, but yeah Okay, and, and, uh, <clears throat> okay, now here's where this whole thing kind of goes in a different direction, is Mako and, um, Asami, they are trying to get into the bottom of this hole, like, you know, like, the, the ships are getting seized, this and that, and, you know, like, Asami's like, my company's going to be ruined, Mako's like, ah, I need to get them as soon as possible, and I need to get to the bottom of this. And the, 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 the guy was being interrogated. Now, Beifong and all of them are there. And obviously, Beifong is like, I don't have time for this. You know, like, rookie, you do your own job. While these two police officers, the other two police officers with the mustache, they are just taking the fun out of this whole situation. And it's like, it's, like, it's, 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 it's crazy. This whole thing is crazy. And no one's listening to Marco. And uh, yeah, like, and Marco's like, yeah, we need to do something. A sting operation. Asami's like, where do we get the ship from? 
the decoy, the, the bait. Varric is like, oh, I'm letting me in into this. And it kind of, <clears throat> like at the end, we kind of realized why he was so enthusiastic into joining this. It's because he's a mastermind behind this whole situation. Like he waits at that time, you know, kind of baited them. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, okay. And <coughs> the operation starts. <laughs> Marco goes to ask Bolin for help, and Bolin is like, "Oh, I am a star. You know, I am a star. I I have my uh, instrument to take care of, and you know, like I could not go in these dangerous situations." And he kind of calls him out about that whole situation that Marco kind of said before. He's like, um, oh, like, figure it out on your own. That's what you said to me, didn't you? Did you forget about it? Huh? Like, so, what do you think? You do, shouldn't you also figure the situation out on yourself? And, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what? Whatever happens, you know, like, I, I don't think I can, I can dislike uh, Bolin, you know? Even if he kind of does a little bit, goes in a little bit of a different path or a wrong path, He's, he's, he's basically doing this because he's too down to earth. He's not understanding that he's being manipulated. And you know what? I don't think I can, I can <laughs> get angry at him for that. But, you know, like, he is <laughs> acting a little stupid here. <laughs> but this is Bolin. So, yeah, I, like, you know, I don't think you can do anything about this situation. <laughs> he's again going to learn the hard way. <laughs> Just like Eska and Desna. You know, he learned it the hard way, and now he's going to probably learn this the hard way as well. This whole Varric and Ginger situation, my god. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, uh, Marco goes to the Triple Triads, or that's what the name was? No, Triple Threads, sorry, not Triads. <laughs> the Triple Threads, and <clears throat> he hires them for the job, and... So wait, so this is what happened basically. He hired them and we get to know in the end that someone else came after that. Which which someone else we know who it is now. But and these triple threats, they agreed to like, you know, do the whole thing. Help them uh out on this thing operation. But as we see, like, you know, they, they basically wasted their time over there just doing random stuff and keeping them distracted. And uh, Marco, like, you know, hears that and he and Asami can tries to get out of that situation. While on the other side, Bolin and Ginger, um, Bolin just went and <laughs> kissed Ginger over there. Ginger, like, that was definitely wrong, Bolin. Like, you should not do that. Like, what the hell, Bolin? Like, <laughs> there was no con consent. And, oh boy, I don't know. And Ginger is like, oh, why did you do that? Bolin's like, but I thought that you liked me. Ginger is like, no, I liked, I liked, um, what was his name? Nuktak, no, Nuktak? Yeah, something like that. I liked him, not Bolin. Bolin. Bolin's like, but that's me. But, you know, Bolin, like, I guess, like, you know, you're kind of wrong here. You're not Nuktak, you are Bolin. You know, that's just uh, an act that you're playing. And, you know, like, as they say, like, actors and actresses kind of get into their, you know, like, their personas to, like, you know, make the acting better and i guess ginger was talking about that you know he she went into his persona into her persona and like you know she was nuttak's girlfriend there so obviously that's why she was affectionate towards him but for the real bolin that's not the case so yeah i i have to say i think bolin was at the wrong here like you should not like do something like that just like that you know like mm, that's wrong <clears throat> Um, yeah, but okay, so and then we get shifted to the next scene uh, uh, Asami and Marco trying to getting out out of that situation uh, a little little fight happens, you know in speed boats and everything Marco shoots uh, Like you know does some fire bending they do some water bending and Somehow or the other and Asami is like, you know steering the boat and they are able to get out of that situation some way or the other and Marco's like, wait, what is happening? Why were they stalling us? They go in into the, um, uh, like, you know, their warehouse and Asami sees, like, everything's gone. They looted her completely. And now I can understand why this happened. Basically, Varric did this to make Asami dependent on him. 
as he you know saved you know so called saved the company now that you know he's like her partner so oh boy yeah that was like this was like a whole setup now this part i have i i don't know how i'm i'm, I'm I, like you know I, i'm i'm not really not liking this whole marcos like you know jumping from one person to another like like what the hell he's like uh like but i guess he did not instigate the kiss like it was asami but but still you know like he i don't know man like this this whole thing of marco just like you know first asami then Korra, now asami again like what's going to happen after this she's he's going to jump like you know like ship again and later on like you know start like, like after like break up with asami after this and get together with Korra again is that what's going to happen is this what is going to happen throughout this whole series like marco just like you know just going from one girl to another like what is this like this is one thing that I have I, I'm, I'm really not liking this whole thing of um, just this is this is weird you know like and Asami for God's sake Marco already like what can I say like he abandoned you and um, yeah this is this is this is ridiculous like i'm pretty sure I'm, I'm i'm you know what i'm i'm going to i'm going to say the future here i'm going to predict the future here um marco's going to get together with asami after this yeah that's what's going to happen and i don't know if like this is going to continue to be the official couple or what not but i don't know like this this is this is very unusual and i don't know I, this this part of uh, legend of korra i really don't like this whole like romantic they they completely destroyed this thing in my opinion this whole like you know um this romance part if you call it that they this is this is not good like if you if you if you cut that portion out Korra, the legend of Korra book uh like one and we're continuing book two is pretty good but i think this part is pretty weird like i'm really not liking this 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 so-called romance part like what is even happening like this like Marco's just like just what can I say like one day score on the next day is Asami the next day score on the next day is Asami is this what's going to happen from here onwards I don't know like like for God's sake like what is this <sighs> but you know what at least this time like uh, they broke up at least at first like unlike the first part where he basically like you know didn't even bother to tell asami that yeah we are breaking up and like you know that whole thing but at least this time he and Korra broke up and after that this is happening yeah i guess it's fine if you think of it in that way but still like the whole situation is not fine like what is even going on over here um yeah i'm not liking this this whole thing but anyways and then like marco interrogates uh the, the guy the two tote whatever his name was i forgot <laughs> uh, and he tells that oh someone came and bribed us and yeah just after he went away marco comes to the stage and obviously like you know bolin is doing his thing and Marco sees the explosives and he realizes after seeing the remote control detonator that is Varric. Now here's where I got one of the biggest surprises. I really not was not expecting Varric to be the one behind this. And obviously he is, I'm pretty sure he has some agenda here. I'm not sure what it is. But if I can, I have to guess, guess I think it's something related to his business because as far as I've studied Varric, he only cares about his business, you know, only about that. That's that's basically the guy that Varric is like, and I am pretty sure he can sacrifice anything if it, if it means that he can increase his business prospect or something like that. So I'm I'm pretty sure it's something like that. That's like his agenda or something. It's not something like um, Unalak. It's definitely something like, you know, re which is related to business in some way and you know what that's what i said like you know i i have to say if uh like you know this whole thing kind of caught me off guard because i said in one of the previous episodes that i really like varic it'll be a shame if he turns out to be a bad guy and then i saw that he was a good guy i was like oh i'm quite happy that he's a good guy he kind of reminds me of saka and now i'm seeing like oh he was actually the one behind everything 
and I'm like, oh god, like, <laughs> like fine, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to what, how this is going to go from here onwards because Varric played everyone, you know, if you think about it, like this whole thing, he kind of like you know, and that's what I said, you know, like he basically like you know used Marco and Asami as like you know a distraction as a bait over there so that he can clean the whole warehouse, you know. That Asami, uh, like, you know, Asami is going to go into debt or whatever, and then he did this just so that he can sweep, swoop in and help out Asami, uh, making her indebted to him. And I don't know what his further plans are, but he basically did this to become partners with Asami and make her indebted to him. And I really don't understand why he's doing this. What's his end goal? but it's probably something related to the future industries i'm pretty sure because as, as i said he's a businessman and i think it's somehow like some way related to the future industries probably he wants future industries like you know wants to like you know wants it as his own or something that's why he's manipulating like you know this situation and making um asami indebted to him so something like that and here like you know marco comes in asami's like marco he saved he saved my company very brought a controlling interest in future industries isn't that great and and marco's obviously marco cannot say anything here he he was just going to say that oh varic is responsible and now he sees this and he shut up here which i think is a good thing because i remember a similar thing happening before where marco did not shut up and blabbered everything i think it was, it was with cora i don't remember the particular scene you know and cora got extremely mad and obviously, so it's good that he learned from his mistake and he, he kind of shut up. He's like, you know what, let's just keep quiet, not like, you know, make the situation even bad, uh, worse. And like, if I say something here, Assam is going to get mad and it will be a mess. So let's just shut up here. Let me gather some evidence, then I'll get him, which I think is good because I, as far as I can remember, a similar scene like this happened before. <laughs> Marco blabbered everything or something happened like that. And Cora was not happy at all with the whole scene. So yeah, at least he is, you know, he learned from that. All right, the last scene, the most surprising scene of this episode, except the Varric scene, is Cora wakes up in a weird island. There are people who kind of look like firebenders. I don't know if, who they are. It looks like they look like firebenders. But yeah, um, she walks, wakes up and she's like, who the hell am I? Who's Avatar Cora? And so yeah now she has amnesia great <sighs> like yeah <laughs> this is <laughs> uh. so that was it guys um as i said i'm not happy with the whole asami and marco situation again like i don't like this whole marco like you know just you know like just jumping from one person to another and uh like it's probably just me i don't know if other people were bothered by this but i'm really not liking this aspect of the legend of Korra. but otherwise it's a it's a it's a good it's a good story it's a good show i like it uh even though uh book two's story is a bit weaker than book one but yes yeah, it's, it's still okay i guess so <laughs> yeah let's see so um I, and i've heard that the book three and book four are a lot better than book two so i'm kind of looking forward to that uh, I feel I, I feel like I've seen some people saying that book two is like the weakest of everything. So I'm looking forward to the future books, uh, you know, book three and book four. So yeah. Anyway, so that's it, guys. So thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to The Legend of Korra, book two, episode number five and six. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. So. Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of The Legend of Korra. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.